Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over the 4 out 1 in offense that you can run against the matchup or man to man defense. And if you've ever wondered what software I use to create these videos or want to learn to make these videos for your own team, stay tuned to the very end so you can find out how. It's holding them! That's a jump ball! You missed that one! Fresh, he got whacked! Call a foul! Get up! How is that not a foul? Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for checking out my videos and I hope you find them helpful as a coach or a player. If you like this video, please hit that like button and if you like the content, please subscribe for more. If you're familiar with my channel and have benefited from the content I put out, YouTube has unlocked this thanks button under each of my videos where you can help support this channel so I can keep my content free and put out more videos on a regular basis. You can also buy me a coffee. Links in the description below. Thank you for your generous support. And now back to the video. The four out one in offense. It gets its name by having four players outside the three point line and one player inside on the block. I'll be referring to the slot, wing and corners in this video. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, here's the slot, here's the wings and here are the corners. The advantages of the four out one in offense. It might be the very first offensive strategy you learn as a player because it's easy to teach and to learn. For you coaches, it's great for beginner teams as well as more experienced ones, meaning you could start your younger teams off with this offense and it would still be a viable option for them as they get older and more experienced. There are some disadvantages to this offense. The most obvious is that you can't run it against the zone defense you'll need to have a second offense to run against the zone. It's also tough to run successfully against a team who plays great help man-to-man -man defense. If you don't know what that is, I'll touch on it briefly here. If you're set up in the four out one in offense, most youth teams are taught to run their man-to-man -man or matchup defense like this, one or two steps away from their man and between them and the basket. A variation of this might be a more aggressive or denial defensive posture where the defenders stay close up to their opponents. The four out one in offense will work against either of these defenses, but you may struggle against a good help man-to-man. -man. In help man-to-man -man or matchup defense, defenders who are two passes away from the ball stay on the center line ready to help and defend against drives to the middle. With the ball here on the slot, our four and two players are one pass away from the ball. Our three and five players would be two passes away from the ball, so their defenders would move to the midline in a help man-to-man -man or matchup defense. If the ball moves to the corner, now two, three, and five are two passes away, and the help defense would look like this as they move to the midline. It's a completely different look for the offense. You're unlikely to encounter this defense at lower levels, but I just wanted you to be aware. Sorry for the tangent, but I wanted to prepare you for the different looks you might encounter. That was a very basic overview of the help defense. If you're interested in a more in-depth look at that defense, let me know in the comments below. Now back to the four out one in offense. In this offense, we position four players outside of the three point line and one player on the block on the opposite side of the ball. Our five player must move in relation to where the ball is on the court. When we keep our five player or post player on the opposite side of the ball, it helps to keep this area of the lane open for dribble penetration from the slot or backdoor cuts from the corner and opposite slot. It also helps maintain the first and probably the most important rule for this offense, which is always keep great spacing on the court. With this setup, you can see the great spacing we have here. I don't like to tell my players an exact distance like 15 or 18 feet apart. What I like to say is be far enough away from your teammate so that one defender can't guard both of you at once. For really young teams, you may want to have them come close enough where they can make this chest or bounce pass easily. It's not ideal spacing, but in my opinion, if they're too young to make a 15 foot pass, the focus should be on enjoying the game and not so much about learning plays. Now for the first part of the four out one in offense, it's called pass cut fill. First, we'll go over the slot to wing pass. Once this pass is made, our one player is gonna cut all the way towards the basket looking for the pass. If this pass is open, we wanna hit the cutter. That brings up rule number two, never pass and stand always cut after a pass. If the slot to wing pass is made and the initial cut to the basket isn't open, player one must continue the cut all the way to the basket.
player 2 will fill where player 1 was. Player 3 moves to fill player 2 spot, and player 1 fills the wing where player 3 was. It's important to know that we always cut ball side in front of the defender and not behind them. We'll go over backdoor cuts later on in this video. Here's a look at the slot to wing pass, cut, fill rotations. Our first look is the pass to our cutting teammate. We're also looking to drive or shoot from this position. That brings up rule number three, always catch the ball in a triple threat position. That means you're a threat to pass, shoot, or drive. Players looking to make only one of these moves are easy to defend. If our wing player can beat their defender off the dribble and get to the basket, make sure they wait until the lane to the basket is clear. And if player 5's defender steps into the lane to stop the drive, we have an easy drop off pass for the layup. Another option off the drive is to kick it out to the perimeter for an open shot or reset of the offense. Know that these positions on the floor aren't fixed, especially on the drive and kick options. Players on the opposite side of the ball can and should move to an open spot to receive the pass. If the driving kick starts from the wing, the wing player will circle out and fill their position. Here's a look at the slot to wing pass from the opposite side. First look, hit the cutter on the give and go pass for a layup. Again, if player 5's defender steps into the lane to stop the drive, we have an easy drop off pass for the layup. Our five player has to be aware of where the ball and their defender is at all times. And because we're always in a triple threat position, if the first pass isn't there, we can look to shoot or drive hard to the basket once the lane is clear. And of course, we're always ready for this pass in the paint if player five's defender leaves to help. The next pass we're gonna go over is the wing to slot pass. With the ball on the wing, our five player should be on the opposite side of the ball, keeping this area of the court open. When the wing to slot pass is made, the wing player is going to cut towards the basket looking for the pass. Again, we want to cut ball side in front of our defender and not behind them. After the wing to slot pass, our first look is right back to the wing cutting to the basket. If that pass is open, we want to hit them for the layup. That brings up rule number four, always cut hard expecting the ball when cutting. No lazy or walking or jogging cuts. Cut like you want the ball and expect the ball every time. Again, if our five player's defender steps up, we have an easy drop off pass for the layup. Another option off the entry pass is to kick it out to the perimeter for an open shot or reset of the offense. And just a reminder, players on the perimeter shouldn't stand and watch, remain engaged in the action and move to an open spot to receive a pass. If we do kick the ball out to the perimeter, our cutter will circle back out to reset the offense and we're back in our four out, one in setup. If the give and go pass isn't open, we don't want our wing player to cut all the way to the opposite side of the court. That would force our wing to the slot and the slot to the other slot and make our two player have to dribble to the corner, which isn't a great idea. Instead, if our wing player doesn't receive the pass, they just circle back out to their original position and our two player can drive to the basket or step in to a three point shot if it's open. Now let's go over the slot to slot pass. When the pass is made, our five moves to the opposite side, trying to bring their defender with them to open up this driving lane. Again, it's a pass and hard cut to the basket, ball side in front of the defender and not behind them. If that first pass to the cutter is open, we want to hit that option every time. If their bottom defender steps up to stop the drive, player five is always ready for this pass and layup. If that first pass to the cutter is not open, we don't want to fill to the opposite side Player 1 will circle out and fill the wing, and player 4 will move to fill the slot. Once again, if that first pass isn't there, the 2 player can look to drive to the basket once the lane is clear. And if player 5's defender steps into the driving lane, player 5 is always ready for this pass and layup. Another option for player 2 is to step in and take the shot if it's open. So that was the basics of the 4 out 1 in offense. Pass, fill, cut. I'm going to go over the backdoor cuts, but first, let's review the four rules. Rule number one, always keep great spacing on the court. Don't allow one defender to guard two. Rule number two, never make a pass and stand around, cut to the basket, or set an off-ball screen. Rule number three, if you receive a pass outside the three-point line, be ready to pass, shoot, or drive. And rule number four, 
Make hard cuts looking to receive the pass. No lazy walking or jogging cuts. All right, so when should you make a backdoor cut? First, you must be one pass away from the ball. If the ball is here on the wing, only player one is one pass away. If the ball is here in the slot, players two and four are one pass away. If a slot to slot pass is made, players one and three are one pass away. And if the ball moves to the other wing, only player two is one pass away. The next criteria to make a backdoor cut is if your defender is playing tight or denial defense. Here, player two is one pass away from the ball and their defender is playing tight aggressive defense on them. Unlike our regular pass cut fill where we cut ball side to the basket, every backdoor cut should be made behind the defender. It's good to teach your players to keep an eye on their defender's eyes. If they turn to look at the ball, as many defenders will, that's the very best time to cut backdoor. The entry pass to the backdoor cutter should be a leading bounce pass that the cutter can catch in stride to the basket. And of course, if player 5's defender steps into the lane to help, it's an easy drop-off pass to player 5. If the backdoor pass isn't there, we don't want the cutter to circle out toward the ball and force the wing to dribble away. Instead, our cutter completes the cut all the way to the basket and to the opposite wing, and players 4 and 1 move to fill. So, 2 makes the backdoor cut, it's not open, and players 4 and 1 move to fill. When the ball's in the slot, now players 3 and 1 are one pass away, and either one can cut backdoor if their defender is playing up close. In order to avoid players 3 and 1 cutting backdoor at the same time, it's good to teach your players to read each other's eyes. If player 2 is looking over at our wing in this scenario, it's probably best if the wing cuts backdoor and not player 1. It's not always an exact science, and building chemistry with your players is always best so you can just anticipate each other on the court. Let's go over the backdoor cut from the wing when the ball is in the slot. Remember, we don't want to cut ball side on a backdoor cut. We want to cut behind the defender who is playing too close and catch them off guard. Again, the entry pass to the backdoor cutter should be a leading bounce pass that the cutter can catch in stride to the basket. And if player 5's defender moves to help, we have an easy drop off pass for the layup. And if the backdoor pass isn't open, the wing cutter finishes the cut to the basket, circles back to fill their original position, and we're back in our four out offense. Now let's talk about our post player. Till now it looks like our post player only moves to the opposite side of the ball and remains ready for a pass if their defender leaves to defend the drive. It's much more than that. Let's go over what the post player can do in this offense. Yes, our post player has to stay on the opposite side of the ball and move when the ball switches. That's a key factor to this offense. And they have to remain ready for this pass and layup on all drives when their defender leaves to help. But if the drive comes from the corner, our post player needs to be aware and flash to this open spot. Our post player needs to be able to read the situation. If they don't move to get open, this pass is essentially taken away. If they move before the defender reacts to the drive, they'll bring the defense with them and take away our drive to the basket. Also, if the defender guarding the post is playing too far under the basket or isn't paying attention, our post player can flash to the ball side and seal the defender on their back. Getting the ball into the post is always an option in this offense. It's especially great if your post player can get to the basket or draw a foul on your opponent. The other options from the post are to kick it back out to the perimeter or make a backdoor pass to a cutter to the basket. The post player can also flash to the high post in this offense. I say flash because you don't want them to hang out in the high post. If they don't receive the ball immediately or within one to two seconds, they should return to the low block opposite the ball. If they do receive a pass in the high post, they have the option to attack the basket, kick it out to the perimeter, or hit a cutter going to the basket. You can run a lot of different scoring options from the high post like give and goes, handoffs, and fake handoffs and more. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see some of those scoring options. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this, leave a like. If you like the content, please subscribe and hit the bell notifications. It helps out the channel a ton. In this video, we covered the basic of the four out, one in offense. Drop a comment below if you'd like to see more scoring options for this offense. And if you're wondering what software I use to create these videos or you would like to learn how to make these videos for your team, 
Click the link in the description for more information. There's a lot more plays you can check out from my channel. Review this play again, share it with your team, and I'll see you right away in the next video.